Hello and welcome to part one of IT Service Continuity Management. My name is Dr. Suzanne Van Hove and I will be your instructor. In this lesson, it's a very quick lesson, but it's because we have a lot of information coming up around the activities in continuity. But we need to pay a specific attention around the purpose, objectives, and scope of continuity. We'll look at its value to the business and we'll also look at some of its basic concepts. We'll conclude this module or this lesson with a first-hand view of the activities and the, a bit of the process flow that we'll be spending a great deal of time on in the next lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. So the purpose of continuity management is to support the overall business continuity management. I'm going to stop right there. It is not up to IT to recover the entire organization. And while I'm stopped, let's just back up a second and read what this or read again what this process is about. It's about IT service continuity management. It's about continuing to deliver services. This is not about disaster recovery. Now, it can be part of that element, right? But this process is about continual service delivery as agreed. So let's continue with this purpose. Supporting the overall business continuity management by ensuring the required IT technical and service facilities can be resumed within required and agreed business timescales. We do not see the terms disaster recovery there, but it can be obviously part of these activities. The purpose is continual service delivery as agreed. Okay. Uh, we want to ensure business survival by reducing the impact of a disaster or a major failure. We also, through our actions, want to reduce service vulnerability and risk to the business. So this is another process that's going to actively assess risk. We looked at availability. We looked at security. Now we're looking at continuity. So three different views of risk that is going to be incorporated in our service designs. We're going to ensure that we maintain a predetermined level of service in the event of a disaster. And we're also, because of our actions, it's going to preserve a high customer and user confidence in our organization to deliver functionality. I made a statement at the very beginning of this slide saying it's not up to IT to recover the business, and that's quite true. But what does an IT organization do if the business doesn't endorse continuity measures? If they don't think it's important, they don't think it's necessary. Well, this is where I can turn to the international standard ISO 20,000 for some guidance. If you go through and learn about this standard, you'll know that continuity management or IT service continuity management is the only process or the requirements that don't have to be completed if it's outside the scope of the business plan. So we have to have evidence that says that. For example, I'm a small business owner. If my office is destroyed, I lose all of my collateral and evidence. Of course, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, I'm not going to recover. I'm done. I'll sell my customer list to somebody and say, mm, that's it. That's the end of my business. Now, if you think of it in one way, I'm not applying any type of continuity measure. If you think about it in a second way, you can say, well, that is my continuity measure. I'm done. I quit and here's my customer list. I'm going to sell it. Fair enough. But again, it has to be something that is agreed by the business. Secondly, continuity management is an insurance policy. This is the process that tends to get cut when funds get tight. This is saying, I'm going to guarantee, remember those warranty processes, that we can continue to deliver service. But in enabling our organization to do that, there is a very large cost. Either we have to have a redundancy in our network, we have to have contracts in place where we can fail over and utilize other services, whatever. So this is something that really consumes a great deal of resource, especially setting it up, and then also once that you have initiated the failover uh, activities, it is not inexpensive. But is it worth the value to continue to deliver services even though a disaster has 
uh, has occurred. One last point and then I'll move on. Um, our research organizations, Gartner, Forrester, etc., have all come to the same conclusion that an organization without any type of service continuity management, if they experience a disaster, they will never achieve the same level of status or excellence that they have had prior to that disaster. They'll lose customers. They will never have the same sort of service delivery. Um, and many times organizations will just fold. So this is something that we want to have around. The scope here for, for continuity, first of all, the organization, every organization has to define what is a disaster. Anything that's outside of this scope, these are going to be events that are going to be handled by incident management. So we, right away, we have a relationship here between incident and continuity. If we cannot define what a disaster is, automatically something's not right. It's going to be handled by incident. We want to utilize a BIA, a business impact analysis, something that we talked about in availability, to define those vital business functions, VBFs. So a couple of neat little acronyms for you, like we need more in an IT organization, right? So we have a BIA. We want to define the vital business functions and then assess the potential risks against those vital business functions. The scope then is to develop and manage an overall strategy and have a documented plan to protect those assets, the organizational assets, and in guaranteeing and ensuring that they will continue to deliver as agreed. We'll define the activities that support those services during the disaster, and then we will continue to test those developed plans, making sure that they're still valid, reliable, and meet the organization's needs. The value of continuity management to the business, well, one, first of all, it's going to support the business continuity management plan if the organization has one. This is going to be a challenge and a risk for an IT shop if there isn't a business continuity management plan. Secondly, it will raise awareness of the continuity and recovery requirements because if a disaster strikes, you can't always depend that your main staffing group will be on site. Folks may have to do jobs outside of their day-to-day -day activities, meaning they need to be aware of that and also have the appropriate training. So we have that defined level of responsibility. We want to have that integrated approach between business continuity management and service continuity management, making sure that our actions are valid and that they will meet the needs of the organization. So we can have cost savings, we have a documented recovery plan, and we have continued delivery of IT services as agreed. Okay, so policies, principles, and basic concepts for continuity management. I think the key one here is that service continuity management underpins business continuity management. Business continuity management will have elements of crisis management within it saying, what are my roles, responsibilities that are needed in, in times of a disaster? The principles that we're going to follow, we're going to follow that life cycle approach, making sure that our plans, our continuity plans are aligned with the business continuity plans so that we fulfill all those requirements. Well, that's easily said as well as done if we look at the diagram off to the right. We can see that both BCM and ITSCM are listed in this graphic side by side where they both go through some form of initiation saying, hey, we need to address this. Business continuity management then is going to develop a strategy. That strategy is going to dictate plans, and then they're going to go into a holding pattern where they will ensure that those plans are accurate so that ongoing operation. Notice that it's mirrored at the IT service continuity management side, is that the business continuity strategy will dictate and drive the requirements and strategy from an IT perspective, which will then drive how we're going to implement those plans, which should, again, coordinate with the business continuity plans. Once we have implemented the necessary measures, we're in that ongoing operation stage where we would be doing testing, education, communication, and we should be working together. That continuity event, well, it will trigger the invocation and both business continuity measures as well as IT service continuity measures would be engaged. And once we recover from that event, of course, we're going to go back up, review, and then maybe go through that cycle again. So it's a continual improvement as we address 
the potential disaster. We're going to look at this process flow in a much greater depth and detail in the next lesson. We'll see you there.